beautiful, large, voluptuous lips. Voluptuous, voluptuous. I think it's voluptuous, voluptuous, voluptuous. It's voluptuous, voluptuous. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. I know, look at me, I got the one eye done. I know that today is gonna be a chatty video and often when I get onto like little rants, not that, not that, I, not that I plan on ranting, but probably gonna rant. When I get on like long tangents of a topic that I'm super passionate about, I tend to forget to do the makeup or at least not time my makeup super well. So today I was like, let me get my act together on, on the left eye and then I'll come on into the right eye we'll do the face together and I'll tell you about all the gorgeous products on my eye already and that'll just be the plan but that's not what this video is about you did not click on this video to listen to me talk about how I tend to talk and get distracted a lot no you clicked on this video because you like me have an interest in an honest conversation about Instagram and TikTok filters I'm sure you've noticed and I know this has been something that's been going on for years but does it not feel like the filters have gotten a bit out of hand lately I think what's making them get out of hand is that they've gotten smarter they've gotten harder to to detect they've gotten more seamless with our faces you know there's certain filters that you can literally put your hand in front of your face and it doesn't even glitch like it used to so we've come a long day from the snapchat puppy dog ears and tongue filters I want to talk about how I feel about them how I feel that they affect my self-esteem my overall mental health and to just have an open conversation about it and I'm totally open and excited to hear what you have to say in the comment section I think this is something that gets talked about a lot in the sense of people being like filters are bad or like filters are fine mind your business but we don't get a lot of like nuanced conversations of like what's between there you know let's explore all sides of the argument and I can't wait to hear your takes so if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to have an honest conversation about Instagram and TikTok filters with me then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching because it's coming at you right now. So I'm clearly in kind of an emo mood today <laughs> going with this eye look. I'm feeling very edgy, feeling very grungy. So let's talk about filters. The reason that I bring this topic up now is because I feel like, like I was saying in the intro, the filters are getting smarter. Technology is improving by this, literally by the second it feels like in 2023. But uh, something about the filters getting smarter like really freaks me out a little bit because filters used to be so obvious, you know? Like you could so tell when someone was wearing a filter on Instagram, even if they went through the trouble to save the video and re-upload it because if you don't know on Instagram if you use one of their filters just like in the story editor and then post it it'll go to the top of the screen and say like they're using this filter and you can click on it and try it yourself and I have no problem with that I love that Instagram has that transparency of telling you when someone's wearing a filter but a lot of times to get around that people will just save it and re-upload it because if you save it to your phone and re-upload it it doesn't show but even with those filters like when people do the little like skirt around trick I feel like you can still kind of tell because a lot of the Instagram face filters like to give you that lift that they think everybody wants like this facelift where it looks like you're wearing like a super tight ponytail so I feel like even when people do try to hide those filters I can still tell but you know I also am online way too much but that's not even the point I'm trying to make see I get off on so many tangents when I talk about subjects that I'm passionate about but those filters I feel like now are kind of becoming more obvious to everyone everyone or at least to more people which I guess is good but that's because filters are getting smarter and there's so many of them that like I mentioned earlier are undetectable. I watched a video on James Welsh's video recently talking about filters like this. If you're looking for someone I hope that you've heard of James Welsh but if you haven't he's a skincare content creator but he also has a degree in photo retouching so he's really good at spotting when photos have been retouched even when they don't say they're using a filter he's especially really good at spotting it on video but anyway so he was talking about these filters that are like super hyper realistic and hard to spot on TikTok and he actually included a video from somebody who is an expert on this topic talking about how like these new AI filters match themselves to your facial features it's not like a filter over your face anymore where like you could put your hand in front of it and you can see you know the little like nose highlight line in front of your hands and you can see the little mess 
mascara lashes in front of your hands, but especially with this new bold glamour filter on TikTok, that one is super advanced and like looks really realistic because it's like matching itself to your exact facial features. And I just think like that is so wild. Wow, the way technology has advanced, but it's also a little scary, you know? And I think the reason that I say that this is kind of scary is just because the effect that it has had already is so great. One, on people's expectation of what makeup can look like. I also just want to note, I know this is not the right thing to do. I know you're not supposed to put applicators on your face when you apply foundation or skincare or anything. Honestly, it's just easier when filming and normally I would put it on my hands. Anyways, not what this video is about. But the effect that it has had on one people's expectation of what makeup can look like, the amount of times I've seen makeup artists on TikTok post about how people, instead of showing them like inspo pics of like a celebrity or something, they're now showing them pictures of themselves with filters on being like, oh, can you make my makeup look like this? And the makeup artist is like, no, I can't because it's a filter. It's altered your features. It's made your cheekbones higher. It's made your lips bigger. Like I, it's never gonna look exactly like this filter because this is not the shape of your face. And so not only is it affecting people's ideas of what makeup can do for them, but I've also seen plastic surgeons say that they're getting basically the same experience where instead of bringing in pictures of celebrities, people bring in pictures of their faces with filters on and even plastic surgeons are like, I can do some of this for you, but a lot of it is extreme. And you know, I almost feel like some of these filters, especially because the lip filler ones are like the big ones, right? Every single freaking filter wants to make you look like you have beautiful, large, voluptuous lips. Voluptuous, voluptuous. I think it's voluptuous, voluptuous, voluptuous. It's voluptuous, voluptuous. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all of these filters want to make you look like you have these big voluptuous full lips and I think it's driving a lot of people to get filler, which I am so pro do whatever the hell you want, spend your money however the hell you want to make yourself look however the hell you want as long as if you have an audience, you disclose it to that audience so that they know that you look the way you look because you got filler in your face. Like I have absolutely no problem with that, but I do think that these filters are causing a lot of people to go out and get filler not from the most reputable places because maybe they can't afford to go to a super reputable place. James Welsh, I'm gonna keep mentioning him. I just, I'm clearly a huge James Welsh fan, but he even mentioned that like he has filler and he said like it's expensive filler and he has to get it like multiple times a year and it's very expensive because it's a very good reputable place. But there are a lot of people who are on TikTok and who are getting influenced by these filters to go get lip filler who are going to people who are doing lip filler out of their garage. Watch James's When Beauty Turns Ugly series on his YouTube channel. I'll link the specific video that I'm going to talk about down below. But there was this whole situation where people, especially during the pandemic, when a lot of places that would typically do lip filler or cosmetic surgeries were shut down temporarily, and people were so desperate to get their filler that they were going to independent practitioners, people who had a license. I shouldn't even put it in quotes, they did have a license, but got their license from a place that was just like <laughs> handing out licenses without really making sure people knew what they were doing. So I was going to find the James Welsh video to link for you guys, and I realized I kind of combined two videos in my head. So when I'm talking about the botched lip filler, I think the video he made was talking about botched Botox, and he made another video talking about these Hyaluron pens where people were doing like DIY lip filler or also doing them on other people but I don't know if the people with the Hyaluron pens necessarily had a license, whereas I know the people doing botched Botox did have a license, but they were getting it from a place that was just handing out licenses without even making people perform the procedures first. So I'll link both videos down below. And I don't just mean like botched in a sense of like, oh, it didn't look good, it didn't look very realistic. No, I mean like people getting permanent damage to their lips, like permanent scars, holes in their lips that will never go away. People getting bad Botox that left scars that will never go away. Oh my gosh, especially people who got the threads. That was a really big thing. A lot of people got, you know, that threading treatment where they literally put threads in your face and they like lift it through the thread threads in your face. People were getting botched treatments of those too and getting permanent facial damage and having to spend all 
of this money getting it reversed. And not to blame all of this on filters because of course people are independent, free thinkers can make your own decisions, but like there's gotta be a reason that this is happening more and more often and I feel like a lot of it is tied back to filters and more people being on social media, seeing those filters every day, a lot of people who do not disclose that they are using filters and they just want to look like them. I mean, a lot of people just want to look like the filters. It's not even like, oh, like that influencer didn't disclose they're wearing a filter and they want to look like them. Clearly, the plastic surgeons are telling us, the makeup artists are telling us, people are bringing in their own face with a filter on. And I'm realizing as I'm sitting here ranting that I said I was gonna really try to present both sides of the filter argument and give a fair shot to people who were like, there's nothing wrong with filters, people shouldn't even be having this conversation, it's so whatever, everything on social media is fake anyways, and like, I, I do want to give that a little bit of time, we'll give it a little bit of merit here, and I do understand that like, yeah, we shouldn't believe anything we see on social media visually because of filters, even because of what I told you at the beginning of this video about my camera. I don't even have a beauty filter, I don't have any filters that go over my camera, but I just naturally get washed out and I think it's the same thing even with the regular iPhone camera sometimes if I sit in good lighting my skin looks really good but if I go take you in the lighting in my bathroom that's like very dimly lit with this like a tan gray walls all around me my skin is going to look very very different so yeah I do understand the argument of like well you shouldn't believe everything you see on social media anyways but I don't think that negates the impact that it has, especially from an influencer perspective. Here's the deal, if you're just like running a personal Instagram account and you're just sharing photos with your friends and every once in a while you wanna pop a filter on to make yourself feel better, okay, those friends are gonna see you in person so they obviously are gonna still know what you look like. I think the issue is when there's these influencers who are posting photos of themselves and videos of themselves too. That's what really scares me is that the photo, the filters can work on videos now. I know video filters have always been around, but they're just like, I remember when I found out video filters were around, how mind blown I was. Cause I was like, I thought if I was watching a video on YouTube and that meant it had to be real because like, it's a video. You can't, the filter can't move with your face. Then I learned that it can, which is absolutely wild and terrifying. But oh shoot, what was I saying? If you have just a personal Instagram account or a personal social media account where you're only followed by your friends and family, they're gonna know what you look like in real life. So they're not gonna get this super warped view of you where you're this like unattainable face because they know what your face looks like in real life. But when it comes to influencers who are never going to meet the majority of their followers in real life, they have nothing to compare to, you know? Unless this influencer gets snapped by a, a TMC photographer, which whenever those come out, those always become so dramatized when people are like, oh, look at this influencer who was spotted by TMZ and look at how different they look. And it's like one, okay, everybody looks bad in flash camera lighting, like when it's just a bunch of paparazzi around them. Like, I really don't think it's fair to compare them to their ring light lighting with that, like even minus the filters, but a lot of times, when people are seen by paparazzi that are like bigger influencers who are targeted by them, people are blown away to see what they actually look like or to see a more realistic version of what they look like because they've created this, you know, artificial version, filtered version of their face online. And I know a big thing going on around TikTok right now is with a, a big creator on there, Alex Earl. If you don't know her, I, I'll be completely honest, I don't follow her. I only know her through seeing people like recreate her makeup looks and stuff. But as far as I know, she's a model and also an influencer and people absolutely love her makeup looks. And they take her makeup recommendations really, really seriously because they think, and she is, I'm not saying they think, I think too, she's very beautiful. So they are taking her makeup recommendations to heart and they're buying those things. She's like selling out products left and right. I've seen so many people do like, doing Alex Earl's a mascara routine and like stuff like that. And it recently was found out, I don't know how people found this out or if she admitted it or what, that she uses a filter on all of her videos, a filter that is not disclosed because it's either been saved to her phone and then re-uploaded. Because even TikTok, usually if you use a filter, you'll see like links at the bottom of TikTok. Like it'll show like this person's using the freckle or the light makeup filter. But so basically it came out that she's been using this filter and I've seen on my For You page, a lot of people trying it on themselves being like, oh my 
my gosh, this is not what I look like at all. Like, I can't imagine building my entire online presence making people think that I look like this in real life because I don't. That's when it tends to become a little more problematic. Like, when you're an influencer and you're selling something and you're using a filter, like, that's what James Welsh was saying in his video, too. He's like, I don't care if someone who's just like a commentary person decides that they want to put a filter on and they don't sell anything related to their image like beauty or skincare or anything that's fine but he's like if you are selling something like if you are making money off of a product recommendation and you're putting a filter on come on that's problematic even if it's not direct even if it's not a paid partnership with a foundation brand or something but you're wearing that foundation and you're saying in the video oh my gosh i love this foundation because it makes me look poreless but you're wearing a poreless filter do you do you see where the disconnect is? Do you see where the issue is there? That is where the issue lies. Also, this is not meant to just roast Alex Earl. I absolutely have no intention of doing that. It seems like the filter she uses really isn't even all that dramatic, but I use her as an example because she's a big creator. But so many people do this on TikTok, creators big and small, but people who are selling you a product. Like I said, even if it's indirect, even if it's not a paid partnership, if they're tagging that brand down below and telling you where to go buy it and they're doing a demo and they're using a filter that is causing their skin to look more perfect causing their skin to look perfect that is not caused by the product like that is a problem look who came to join us for the end of the video it's Bert or do you think I've been too rambly in this video? Do you think it was a little too ranty? Do you think I gave everybody a fair shot? He doesn't care. He lives his life, no filter, 360 to five days a year, 24 seven. He's just cute as ever. Oh my gosh, yeah. But again, I really do, I, I wanna be fair to both sides of the mind your own business, like what filters or whatever versus the you shouldn't be using filters argument. And again, I do think there's a lot of nuance to it. I think you have a responsibility if you have any sort of platform, no matter how big or small, if you have a platform where you recommend products, you got to be telling people when you're wearing filters, especially if you're using filters in all of your pictures and all of your videos, even on stories, you got to let people know, even if you're just recommending something casually, like it doesn't need to be a paid sponsorship for you to have a responsibility to disclose if you're using filters, you know? I mean, I guess legally, maybe you don't, although actually really go watch James Welsh's videos about filters because you kind of do have a legal obligation to let people know when you're using filters if you're selling a product like there is FTC guidelines around this I forget what the name of the UK one is too but they have guidelines around this too you legally have to let people know when you are altering your face if you are recommending a product like if you're not recommending a product and it's just personal doesn't really matter but otherwise you can get into some legal trouble and I don't want that for you or for anyone but yeah I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this whole filters conversation how does it make you feel because I know for me personally every time I try on a filter just because I've seen some someone else try on a filter and I'm like how much is this really altering their face so I'll try it on to just like see what it makes me look like it makes me feel bad especially if like the filter goes on and it's one of the more subtle ones where I'm like wow it just gave me clear skin that's great and then you take the filter off and it's almost like a jump scare to see yourself again and that's not a good feeling so I really try not to even try them on most of the time again I'm just nosy sometimes if I'll see people using the same filter over and over again I'm gonna click on it because I'm like I want to know what you really look like I want to know what it's doing to your face because again I don't know a lot of the influencers who I follow in person so I have no way to verify what their faces really look like so sometimes trying on the filter can give you an idea and it's always like wow yikes this is altering a lot but yeah let me know your thoughts down below I'll list all the makeup details down below too all of the eye stuff aside from the face gems is from about face beauty I use their little matte fluid eye paint and then I use their loose pigment which is looking so pretty is my first time using that and then the face gems are from half magic beauty and the lip is from makeup revolution but i'll list everything down below for you earrings are from shop K. little fake nose right is from amazon i'll link everything down below for you thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i check out my description box for all of my social justice links and everything too and i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye